it's monochromatic mayhem, as Zenith and Yuen are all white on the night, Force Design and Hodinki are back in black for a limited edition, plus we have a ton of watch news all in store in this episode of the Scottish Watches podcast. So I suppose the first thing we're going to do is get Dave to tell us all about this little black beauty. We are going to talk about the Porsche Design Prono 1 the Dinky Edition. Now, this is an interesting little piece, I have to say, because as far as re editions go, this is pretty much as close to the original as I've seen a re edition in many a year. But then a few people have decided to get a little upset about this because it's so close to the original that maybe you should just get an original. But anyway, on with what this is all about. This is Hadinki doing a re-edition, funnily enough, of the Chrono One. A bit of a design masterpiece, I have to say. A watch that I have over the years, had a little bit of a soft spot for, and I've got my eye on it. Never quite bit in the bullet or take my wallet out of the pocket. I am Scottish after all, short arms and very deep pockets, but I decided not to. Should probably have got an original, but this Dink one, quite interesting. Lots of little tweaks and works, shall we say, to differentiate it from the original that you maybe wouldn't see on that original picture that you see of this watch. That said, there's a couple of clever little easter eggs in there that are kind of nods to the, what will we call it, the Hadinki ecosystem, let's call it that. So, this watch obviously has been on the go for many a year. And Ricky, before I get on with the detail, I'm going to say you probably quite like this watch. You'd be right, and that is why I'm wearing a black watch for my wrist check today. I do love this. I have seen so many versions of this. I remember maybe Basel World 2019 before it ended. Porsche had a display area with various GT cars and all the watches going back through the years. I think they did things maybe with oh, Orfina, they did things with IWC, they had variations. And this watch here is a design classic. It stood the test of time. It has been around for decades, I think probably 40 plus years, maybe 45 years. And I could not tell a difference looking at it face on in my head compared to the original. It is so close to that. And I was looking through the spec and obviously it's got sapphire crystal. It's got various things. The movement inside isn't an Eta or La Magna or whatever it was in the past. But at a casual glance, it just looks like one of those vintage numbers. And I think it's a good thing. You're very right. Now, you said 40, maybe 45 years old. You were not that far away, but in fact, it's even older. Back to 1972 when this original design came out, which that makes it, what, in my book, 52 or nearly 52 years old this year. So very much a, a design that, as Ricky says, has stood the test of time. Now, that said, it initially wasn't overly ready to the public, but after a lot of public, especially public Porsche owning people, decided to get in on the act, they eventually released it to the public, and these were even sold through Porsche ADs, where you would buy your car. So this whole have a watch with a car brand on it is absolutely nothing new, in fact, over or nearly 50 years old. Well, I don't own a Porsche design watch, but it so happens. I own something else that's Porsche design. And this was given to me by the guys at Porsche Glasgow because my car went back in for more work after having been in many times before. It's a bit of a peace offering. So this is my black Porsche design beauty. Carry on, Dave. Tell us about the watch. Oh, carry on. So yes, what have I think you done? Have they gone to town? Well, no. As I kind of alluded to at the start, a few people were maybe putting some complaints out there that this was so close to the original. Why wouldn't you just buy the original? But they've been faithful to it. So retaining the sizes, in terms of size, just over 40 millimetres in diameter. So very much still in the sweet spot of today's sizes. 14.15 millimetres thick. So again, in the chronograph territory, not that fat. Not super skinny, but definitely not at the fatter end of the spectrum as far as chronographs go. You've got that classic 6, 9, 12 layout that is so loved from the original in terms of you have at 12 o'clock the 30 minute counter you've got the 12 hour counter at six o'clock and you have the running seconds at nine but there's a couple of little nods to Hadinki. you've got a day and date display but on the day display there's a little nod to the japanese wing of the whole Hadinki empire as many who follow Hadinki will know they have a japanese subsidiary and they have a kanji date option, so you can either have it in English or in Japanese kanji. And you could switch between them with a quick twiddle of the crown. You also have a little nod to the Americans. You've got that one mile re -hot ring on there. A bit of a nod to the kind of American editions that went on in the past. So yes, 
I think there's a couple of cool little tweaks. You've got that H for Hidinki, which is done in a red that is made to resemble a red coloration that was used on the text of the military-issued versions of this watch. So again, lots of little Easter eggs to be found. Something they have done though is they have moved the manufacturing material of the case and the bracelet over to titanium. I believe the original was steel. I stand to be corrected, but I definitely believe the original was steel. And they have a titanium carbide coating in this black finish all over the case and all over the bracelet. Super handsome looking watch. Probably much more oh, durable. first handsome for a while. There we go. I know, had to get it in there. Because actually, to be fair, I think you'll agree with me. It is a handsome looking watch. A limitation on this of 350 pieces. So, not a huge number. But likewise, probably attainable if you really decide you want to get it. And coming in at just under the 10,000 US dollar mark, which doesn't put it into the stupid price category as far as I'm concerned. Very much competing with many mainstream high street brands out there, whether it would be your Omegas or even potentially your Rolexes or any of these other brands. An in-house movement going on here now as well. So I guess you could argue they've updated things a little since the original on that front probably to be expected in and around that $10,000 mark though, it has to be said. If you want to compete with everyone, you need to be on your toes. So all in all, a 350 piece, sub 10000 US dollar, great looking watch that pays very much tribute to its original. To be honest, I think Kadinki have batted out the park with this one. A few of their recent releases have been a little bit not so cool, I would say. This one definitely is a watch that if someone was to say, would you like this, David? I would be saying yes, thank you very much. Well, you're going to have to be quick, David, because using the Hodinkee website and a little trick that we used a while back, if you punch in 999 in the quantity field when you add the watch to the shopping basket, it will then reduce that to the amount they still have in stock. And it's saying at the moment there are 27 of them that I can add to my basket. Now, this could be wrong, they may have updated it, they may have changed it, but 27 is a very odd number. I would assume they would limit you to 10 or 20 or 100 pieces. So the fact that it says 27 leads me to believe, potentially, there are only 27 left. You may very well be right on that one. So, as you listen or are watching this, you may very well be too late, but always worth a double check on Hidinki to see if you like it and it's still available. We do get a bit of hassle sometimes from people saying, oh, you give it to Hodinki a little bit hard, is it a little bit of the green-eyed monster? And no, not at all. We've been supporting Hodinki, not that they need any support from us, but from day one. I have a couple of limited edition releases, I've got a Timex Q, various other things sitting... Uh, we do give them a hard time when it's deserved but we've always said and we even said recently if Ben or anybody else would love to come on to the show just to give us a bit of background and bring us up to speed on how things have been going we would love that opportunity because when we see them at events we speak to them and the fact that it's a revolving door with staff in and staff out and sometimes they do something then they cancel it then they bring it back and they change it it's a little bit like Bremont they're trying to maintain they're trying to grow they're trying to survive and you can't fault somebody for doing that. You can only really fault people when they continuously muck up and continue to do the same muck ups on an ongoing basis. That is a problem. This one here, if this is to be genuinely believed, 27 pieces remaining of the hundreds that they had a mere few hours back, then that is really good to see. And it is a stunning looking watch with the movement technology that's inside it. The fact that it is titanium. I'm trying to remember back, back over at IWC when we went through their museum and we were speaking to people, they were telling about technology and materials I don't think watches were made in titanium back in 1972 so you're probably bang on the money saying the original would have been in steel so the fact is something at that price point with that kind of heritage Porsche is not cheap Porsche design is not cheap so the fact that they've kept it under that 10k mark I think it's a win I think it's stunning would I buy it myself no, I would not, because I have a black number on the wrist just now that's quite similar. That's when I'm wearing it. But, you know, if you like it, go grab it, and hopefully there will still be some available by the time you hit their website. Now, Dave, should we go the complete polar opposite demon to angel? Well, yes, we should do that. But just before we go into the heavenly area, we should talk about a little email that we've got. Maybe a word of warning for something that you'd been up to in the past. Should we punish Ricky by making him read it out? Yes, I think we should. Okay, I'll take one for the team and I'll read this one out. 
Hi guys, this is not how I imagined my first Scottish Watches email would be, but nonetheless here I am writing to you with a public service announcement about Steel Wool. Ricky mentioned in a recent episode about his wicked prank involving Steel Wool and a 9 volt battery in the hand. What a shock that was. But seriously, it got me thinking. Last year my dad sent our family a video of what happens when Steel Wool touches a 9 volt battery. And for those who don't know, it can start a fire immediately. My dad works as a mechanic to our local fire department and he told us that this was the cause of a devastating house fire that had happened recently. Those two items are very common junk drawer or garbage items that can easily be placed near each other so just a PSA to listeners who may not know, check those places and be sure to keep your steel wool and your 9 volt batteries separate. This may be obvious to many people, I thought I'd pass on my dad's advice anyhow. Love the show guys, from Adam K. Yeah, um... Yeah, if you want to know why I did it and you didn't hear the previous episode and you didn't see the video, the whole point of it was I remembered a practical joke I kind of did in school where I got people to hold steel wool, people I didn't like, most people, and then I would say, see how long you can hold on to this, as I took a PP3 9 volt battery and plunged it straight into one side of the said steel wool and it would instantly just catch fire like a sparkler, like a Catherine wheel and it would go off and obviously people would drop it immediately because it was hot. I used that to great effect with a Christopher Ward 12X video that I put together that I spent far too much time on that at the end I was told I could just have placed an iPad underneath to achieve the same effect without almost burning my house down. So there we go, that is that email out of the way and since I read it Dave, you can tell us about this white knight. We will go to the angels from the devil. We have already talked about a titanium carbide darkened little devil. We're now going to talk about an all white ceramic number. And as any regular listener to the show will know, Ricky has a little bit and has had a little bit of a thing for white ceramic watches for quite a while. He's found a few things that have kind of cessated it, but has he found that keeper? I don't think he has yet. This very well could be that because it has another colour in it that he's rather partial to that being blue. Would it surprise you Dave to learn that as soon as I saw this coming across my email that I reached out to our contacts at Zenith to say, would you like us to do a review? Nothing about that surprises me in the least. You probably also... You know what also surprises me is Dave has gone a number of minutes into this episode and he's not commented on my attire. The last few episodes he has really gone to town on me for wearing all kinds of cool tops. This time around he has kept his mouth shut. Why is that Dave? Why is that? Is it because you're sick and tired of those Teddy Rockspin references? No, it's more because you've dressed like what vaguely resembles an adult human being this time and you're wearing something that resembles general sensibilities as opposed to... Okay, so yes, I'm, I'm saying nothing. I'm just glad that my retinas are not being ripped out. It's usually your rectals that have been ripped out. Well, I mean, you know, it takes takes all sorts to make people happy. If you say anything bad about this, there is a Bulgarian who will come after you. Excellent. But let's move on with this watch. This watch that we're talking about is the Zenith Defy Skyline White Ceramic Skeleton. It is all white. Now, the family of these watches, these Defy Skylines, have been around for a couple of years. They've done them in steel, they've even done them in ceramic, but the much more, I guess, expected black ceramic. Now though, they've gone the whole hog and they've gone all white, and this includes a full white ceramic bracelet. It is though also shipped with a white rubber strap, so if you fancy a bit of a lighter wear, maybe something that's good for the summer, you've got that rubber strap in the box as well. Now, the Defy, it's a great looking watch, no denying it. I'm a bit of a fan. I like the Defy style chronographs. Bit chunky, I have to say, but I do very much like them. And this white ceramic number has been paired with what can only be described as a vivid blue workout on the movement. So obviously the word skeleton in the name gives certain things away. Very much a skeletonized watch with all of these parts been done, I believe, in a PVD style coating in blue. But even through the display case back, Everything's blue. The rotor's blue. All of the bridges and plates are blue. It is a very much a punchy summer watch as far as I'm concerned. Let's get straight to the point, Ricky. Is this the watch that might be your forever white ceramic watch? Is this the watch that's going to delay a house move and a wedding? 
let's let's not go there, Dave. You know, I'm quite happy with having all my facilities working. Two limbs at the top, two limbs at the bottom. So let's not answer that question right away. Let's answer the question of, does Ricky absolutely adore the shit out of this? And he does. If I had some spare cash sitting, I wasn't saving up for something. And I could get this. If I could trade in the watches that I'm currently selling, including the one that's on the wrist just now, and get this, would I? Yes, I would. What does it remind me of? It reminds me of the Gerard Perigold Bamford collaboration, the white ceramic that I constantly talk about and yearn for. It reminds me of the Arage watch that I got maybe three, four years ago. I can't even remember how long it ago it was. That was the Tourbillon one. And it had a very similar mechanism with that colour of blue on it. Might even be exactly the same colour of blue. This ticks all the boxes. The fact it comes on a white ceramic bracelet, plus it comes with a white rubber strap. It's just, I just hope it doesn't sell out. I hope it doesn't become evaporation or vaporware. I hope by the time that I do have some spare pennies that one will still be available because the other Zenith that I really wanted to get a number of years ago, and that was the Swiss Beats in orange that came with a record player, that is like hen's teeth, even on the secondary market. I only managed to find one for sale. It was in Dubai and I just got cold feet because it was so far away. This one ticks every box. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the price. We will get to the price. Before we get to the price, though, the price in your head, if you were to postpone any of aforementioned things that are meant to be happening, would be significantly higher than the price of this watch. And I would not be the only one having to watch out for a rogue Romanian. Who would the Romanian be? No, she's not Romanian, Bulgarian for me. Me worrying about this individual from Bulgaria, uh, I think it would need to be you. She'd be coming for you first. She'd probably then come for me because, well, why would she not? But yes, we should both probably tread on a fine line on this one. Well, you know how Paul Thorpe has warned us in the past about Eastern Europeans? And using Paul Thorpe later on, he's been up to a few things in the background. But carry on, Dave, tell us more about the watch. You're, you're definitely diversionary. You're turning into me. But let's get back to the details because the details are going to make it even harder for Ricky to resist. The size, 41 millimetres, just the right size for Ricky's wrists. His wrists are not too small, not too big. They're just Goldilocks. They fit just right, Dave, don't they? They fist, they fist. They fist, they fist, <laughs> they fist just they right. They fit just right. I nearly said fist just right, but I meant fit. You, you meant fit, but you were thinking fist. But, you know, we'll leave that to the listeners and the viewers to determine as to what you may or may not be talking about. Anyway, 41 millimetres onto that perfect fit wrist. Outside of that, otherwise, 100 metres of water resistance. You've got that 12-sided faceted style bezel on there. You've got a screw-down crown, so it will survive the rigours of everyday life. Obviously, we've talked about the movement and the coloration on it. It's a blue that Ricky's definitely a fan of. What else have we got to say? 18,000 euros. In fact, more than 18,000 euros. That is a oof, hefty price tag. That's about the only thing that's probably going to get between Ricky not being murdered and being murdered is that he will probably not want to push that much of a boat into the deep water. We don't really talk about selling watches to buy watches on this show because we like to introduce things and if you have got money saved, if you're looking to save up, if you're getting finance, you know, that is your business and how you get watches is up to you. But consolidation, changing things and selling things, that's something obviously I'm going through the motions of just now, I've mentioned it a number of times, I've already sold one watch I have another on the go and the one I'm wearing just now that will be going soon, so if anyone is interested in that drop me an email, do not DM me uh, this one, it does tick every box I would in a heartbeat sell pretty much most of my collection to get the, not most of my collection, but the ones that I could get rid of to bring the cash back in to get this. Because it is limited edition, one of 100 pieces, I don't think I'm going to be lucky enough. I will just have to sit on the sidelines and wait for something coming through the secondary market down the road. But I do hold out hope that the good folks at LM Communications will take pity on me and send me a press sample that I can use for a couple of weeks just to get me through the summer months. Just when that little glint of sunlight comes through my window as I'm editing the podcast and it lights up my dial. Both of them. And by glint of light, Ricky's talking about the entirety of the Scottish summer, which will probably last less than Definitely less than a day, probably less than half a day, more likely it can be measured in the minutes. But we should maybe move on to a little tale of someone who seems to not have to maybe sell or consolidate some of his collection in order to 
gift very valuable watches to their bride party. This is a story that seems to have been going on for a very long time because when I saw this popping up in the last couple of days, I thought, this is old news. Why am I constantly seeing this stuff reappearing? Well, it turns out the individuals involved have been on a multi-week, month-long process to celebrate something amazing. And the culmination of it is not a marriage of people. It seems to be the culmination is giving away lots and lots of cool, funky gold APs. So Dave, fill us in. What's going on and how did I get involved in this? This was possibly one of the weddings of the decade, if not possibly the century. The pairing or the marriage of two individuals from very wealthy Indian families. And as Ricky mentioned, it was a month-long celebration. But 10 of the groomsmen, 10 groomsmen tells you possibly the kind of size of wedding we're talking about, have all been each gifted a $150,000 AP. And what AP are we talking about? Not any ordinary AP, we're talking about the Otmar PK Perpetual Calendar. Can we just jump in and make a statement about the pronunciation of Otmar PK? PK. So we're not talking just your commoner garden royal oak here, we're talking one of the pricier ones, as I mentioned earlier. 150,000 each. So 10 times that puts you into a significantly big money. Certainly more money than I will probably spend in total in watches in my all life. And probably I can add Ricky into that number as well. But nonetheless, yes, pretty nice wedding gift I have to say. So if that's what he gave his groomsman, I wonder what he gave his wife. I'm sure he gave her one as well. Excellent. I would like to think that she definitely got one because if she didn't get one, she would be very upset. Especially on the wedding night. We've seen this a million times before. Maybe not quite to these levels, but I know that certain people, I think Kevin Hart gifted people that were involved in a couple of his movies, lots of watches. There have been many sports teams, basketball teams, where when they've done well, they've won championships and whatnot. People have been gifted different Rolex releases. So it does happen. It is a cool thing. And as a keepsake, there's a good opportunity there that these will not appear in the local thrift store because that does seem to happen a lot with gifts at weddings. Yes, and you will not be doing that, of course, Ricky. That will not be happening. But something that did happen was Barbara was recently across at an event. She is all over the place. Me and Dave think we travel quite far and wide for things. She's across the globe. Italy, Dubai, different places. Hong Kong later on this year for Dubai Watch Week's Horology Forum. But she was at a local, I think it was a wind-up event, and she met somebody. And she was chatting away to this guy and he said he loves when she is on the show. Well, good news because she will be recording a show shortly and she will be appearing yet again on here. I don't think it'll be a Barbara Ants episode. It will be more along the lines of the one she did recently with Dan, where we talked about his amazing creations. But we'll talk more about that at the end when we're going through our back catalogue and telling you where to go and listen next. But she met up with a listener to the show who absolutely loves the banter that is on here and has been listening for a long, long time. And we just wanted to give a quick shout out to that person and his name is Brian Daniels. Always great to hear from people out there and of course always from Barbara who's always championing the Scottish Watches podcast for us wherever she goes. Well, let me jump in and do something here that we don't usually do. Because Barbara is a phenomenal champion for diversity, equality and women in watchmaking. And we do our bit because ever since the very beginning, we have always invited people on. And it doesn't matter their background, their history, who they are, what they are, what they do. Everybody is welcome as long as we get a good tale to tell. But we don't really get sent much information on more feminine watches or unisex watches. But it turns out... After we included Nico last week, plus of course Dave and Matthew from You Listener Dan, they had released a new watch that has actually hit the headlines across the blogosphere, it's appeared on Instagram. So this isn't a kind of side project, this is something that has actually got a lot of interest from a lot of different folks. I thought, you know what, why don't we talk about it? And Ricky's throwing it over to me because I definitely agree he's not going to be trying to say a certain word that's in the description of this particular model. What we're we talking about, this is a Ulysses Nardan diver at all, was a rather mesmerising dial. Now, let's have a go at David Pronounce's words. The dial is made from a silicate mineral and is pronounced cryosocola. I think that's correct. I hope it's correct because mm, part of my education was in this area. But I believe that's correct, so Ricky, you no longer have to say it. 
Anyway, what is it? It is a silicate mineral and it has many colours in it. One of them, I'm pleased to say, is my favourite. We have got some blue, some green, speckles of coppery brown and of course we can't forget it has turquoise in there as well. Really great looking dial. Obviously lots of stone dials have been doing the rounds over the last few years. They've got more popular and in many cases have become more accessible. Honestly, our friends at Formex using a few stone dials over the last couple of years, definitely bringing those what were in the past hard to obtain, highly priced models down to a much more attainable price point. But anyway, back to Ulysse Da. They have a diamond bezel on here. They've got a size at 39 millimeters. I would say that's verging right into that sweet spot of a watch that most people, whether you have small wrists, bigger wrists, can generally get away with. It looks pretty good on most people. And we say people because whether you're male, female, or however you choose to identify, 39mm in my experience fits on most people's wrists and looks, I would say, too damn good. And in the case of many folk with smaller wrists, does also tend to encompass many women. It looks great when you've got a, a bigger watch on the wrist that is wearable day to day. So yes, I think Ulysse and Ardan have definitely pulled something different to what they're probably better known for. Obviously known for many of those wacky watches like the Freak and maybe the more kind of aggressive military themed divers watches that we've seen at the likes of Watches and Wonders, etc, etc. Ricky obviously also has one of the Freaks, one of his favourite watches I have to say. But this, more traditional in many respects than what you would expect. I quite like the fact that you've got this silicate mineral used for the dial, because obviously Ulysse and Ardan have a huge history when it comes to silicon technology within watch movements as well. So lots of nice little connections there. Definitely check out the show notes, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be seeing it in front of you now. But you'll get a feel for the look and feel, and I'm sure you'll agree. It definitely has little hints of Ulysse and Ardan about it. But at the same time, a little bit more conservative than what you would be expecting. And I say conservative. Well, conservatively, how? Because it has got all these diamonds on it. And this is the only thing I think would move it more into the feminine perspective. It's probably not a watch that I would wear. I'd give it a go. And I have said this on the show before. If someone was to send me up a review watch that was crossing the border. I mean, 39mm, that's spot on. Because there's a lot of reflective surfaces, because it has got the white strap, it's going to look bigger. We should have said that with the Zenith. Because it's white, it will look bigger. Because the chunky monkey I have on my wrist just now in black doesn't look that big because it's black. This one here is also far less expensive than the Zenith that we just spoke about. And it has got the in-house technology. It has got the crazy dial. And it's got the diamonds on it. So this also is limited to one of 100 pieces. I really do like it. And it's very strange that this has come out of left field. Because as you say, the latest and the greatest from UN over the past maybe year has been focusing on camel green. They've had their freak ops. They've had all kinds of things like that. In the last edition, we were talking more. Well, Nico was obviously talking more about the watch that he'd been wearing up until Watches and Wonders, trialing it out, testing it out. And they just seem to be doing lots of variations, lots of new things. They have not told us anything at all about what we're going to see when we go across to Geneva for Geneva Watch Days. And historically, they put on a big show. Last year, we got to see one of their marquetry watches. Again, it had lots of blue silicon technology, not just within the movement itself, but dial side. And because they've not told us anything, it makes me think they have got something pretty good going to come down the line shortly. So stay tuned, make sure you are subscribed. And as we said before, if you're coming across to Geneva and maybe you want to catch up with us because we're going to be there for the duration. We're already meeting up with quite a lot of people that listen to the show and watches on YouTube. So if you want to come along, info at scottishwatches.co.uk that's the email address to get in touch with us there but this one here yep i love it i think it's great would it be for me probably not just because of those diamonds but you know yeah, if you're one of those expressive people and you want to have a little bit more bling on the wrist this could be one for you and as ricky mentioned the price yes compared to the zenith we talked about coming in at a surprisingly affordable price on the basis that this watch has got 40 brilliant cut diamonds inset around this bezel. So what is the price you ask? Just over 15,000 euros. So a good couple of thousand euros less than that white ceramic. I think 
whilst a huge amount of money, no two ways about it, this watch does have a pretty strong value proposition to it if the aesthetic is something that rings home with you. So if you like it, definitely go check out Ulysses Narda and see what you think yourself. And Geneva Watch Days is just around the corner. Last year, we caught up with Paul Thorpe. He was across there and he didn't really know what was going on, but he turned up rather street casual and everybody else was more suited and booted. Even I had gone to the extremes of not wearing my normal attire of jeans, t-shirt, joggy bottoms, etc, etc. But I spotted something on his channel because I am still subscribed and I still see the videos that pop up. And he'd made a post on his community page saying that he was going to now go through the back catalogue of his watch content and delete his videos. So if there are any in there that you like the look of, I would suggest go and download them. Use one of the free downloaders because back in the day, there was tons of good videos and there was loads of things. There was good communication, lots of interesting behind the scenes. He's been on our show a number of times. It was a rocky start when we started first speaking to him, but we got things sorted and he's been on, a num- as I say, a number of times. He was on most recently, probably around about Christmas time, when he'd appeared on the BBC about the thefts that were happening down in London. But he has pivoted away from watches quite a bit, and I think this is his last hurrah, so I don't think he'll be across at Geneva Watch Days. One thing we want to let you know about is we always say do not DM us on Instagram, and people still DM us. I had a DM last night from somebody that was visiting, I believe from the States, and tried to call us from Instagram. That's a first. No one's actually tried to do that before, so I'm going to have to turn that feature off. But they wanted to catch up because we're over in Scotland and they said, hey, we're in Edinburgh, do you want to come and see us? And it was night time. Dave's in Switzerland. I was busy. So I said, you know, give us a bit of notice next time, perhaps, maybe. But the whole reason we say to email us instead of DMing us is the amount of junk that we get. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you're about to see just what our inbox generally looks like. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, have a look in the show notes because you will see the amount of crazy characters from languages that I do not even understand, comprehend or recognise. So definitely email us info at scottishwatches.co.uk. Speaking of emails, we have another one in. Oh Dave, you've got another one in, have you? I have. One went in the front. Oh no, did it get in the front? How did that happen? Oh, anyway, back to the emails. Good morning, Dangerous Dave and Ricky C. Ricky should get this reference. Long time listener from Down Under, loving the podcast. Trivia question. How many times was the phrase what not mentioned in episode 585? Even Ricky slipped one in there. Lots of love, Noah. And yes, Noah, Ricky often slips one in, usually when I'm least expecting it, but I like a little surprise. Well, usually we catch all the handsomes, all the turquoises, all the you knows, all the definitely's. They usually get disappeared because Gav led them out or I led them out, but sometimes things kind of work their way through. But it's a lot better than a lot of other podcasts because when I listen to other people, YouTube videos, stuff on Spotify, yeah, we do okay. I think we do okay. But thanks for that email. And uh, we should probably move on to something else, Dave. So we should get around to it. We'll have Missy L in our case because we haven't actually done it yet. End of the show is coming up, but we need to do it. The wrist check. I always come second. Ricky, in fact, got to come second last time. So back to the norm. Ricky, you're coming first. What are you wearing? Well, I paid a trip to the safety deposit place and I picked up a couple of watches. I took back the Moser and I decided to take a couple of watches that maybe don't quite equate to the cost of that one. But I pulled out my Mad One Red because I've not worn that in a while. And that has been on tour with me the last few days. And I also picked up my Speedmaster Apollo 8. And it turns out it is the 55th anniversary of the first moon landings in and around about the time of recording this show. And I remembered all the hullabaloo five years ago when it was the half century commemoration of what those guys did and all the crazy stuff that happened. Dave got his moonshine gold watch. There was lots of hullabaloo. And then obviously we had that thing with the cough that happened quite soon afterwards. So this here is my first Speedmaster, my first Omega, my my favourite, I don't know if it is my favourite, but it's definitely top of the bunch because I got to see this on my second trip across to Basel World. That would have been 2018 and I'd been there a year before. That is what started my journey into watches in earnest to see this watch because it was on a display stand with a Swatch Group with Omega. And with all the different Speedmasters that had been out before, nothing really tickled my fancy. I'd seen the Reduced, I'd seen this, I'd seen that. 
The Alaska project was quite cool, but it was already well gone. They've had one for sale back in the day, and I missed out on that one. But I saw this on display, and when I came back to Scotland, I went to my local AD in Glasgow and said, Hey, I've seen this crazy looking black ceramic number, what's the details on it? And they said, well, things up here at Baselworld, they take a while before they actually appear in the store, but we can take your details and we can give you a shout when it arrives. It turned out I was the second person in the country to get this. Can you guess who the first guy was? Yes, it's the other guy in the podcast, but I absolutely love this. It's just a shame I don't get the opportunity to wear it. And Dave is probably pulling his hair out and pulling his little Teddy Ruxpin outfit off because... I still have this on an aftermarket bracelet. It is genuine black ceramic. It does match, but Dave doesn't like aftermarket stuff, although he is slightly warming to it. And the party piece on this one, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact it's got that crazy laser ablated dial, which is reminiscent of the moon's surface. It's also got a lot of yellow coloration around here, a lot of loom, and the crown itself actually looms up too. But if I pop it off the wrist, you can see through the back, and hopefully it's not too sweaty and too manky, another good Scottish term, but one of my favourite parts of it is being able to see through there, seeing the mechanism, it's manual wind chronograph technology at its best. It doesn't have the usual colour of ruby sapphires in there. They're all kind of purplish tinged and it is actually fantastic looking. And I'm very happy that I got a hold of this and I've had a good bit of use out of it. Dave, have you still got yours? Yes, indeed I do. And guess what mine is not mounted on? It's not mounted on a fully horrific ceramic bracelet. But you know, as they say, if you like it, then it's for you. Just definitely not for me. Right, it's like pouch. What are you burn on the wrist? Well, of course, as you know from the start of the show, I'm currently in Switzerland at Araj doing a bit of work on a new model. And I happen to be wearing that new model. What we have here is we have the Tourbillon 2 Meteorite Edition. This is a limited edition of only 25 pieces that we brought out. And I have been wearing the prototype of it actually for a good few weeks, but I've had to keep it well and truly hidden under the cuff, which is somewhat difficult when we're in the well, summer we call it, but it's not really summer, let's be honest, which has meant I get to wear a jacket. So this has the meteorite dial. This is the follow-on model to the one that Ricky has, that being the Turbion 1. So this is in a slightly svelter case than the original, coming in at under 10 millimeters now, whereas the original was just over, but with many you of the same. You told me a story. And I'm wondering if you're allowed to tell the story of why that's thinner. Indeed, I can tell you that story. So, as many people who listen to this podcast will know, the original development with Araj of the Tourbillon Movement was originally going to be a collaborative effort between ourselves and a other partner. Unfortunately, due to some changes of ownerships within various companies, that didn't come to pass, which meant that we decided to do it all on our lonesome. And we, of course, then brought that to market. Interesting point was... The original specification of the collaborative movement was actually thicker than we ended up ultimately being able to engineer the calibre to. We had, though, already ordered the cases to the specifications that were needed for the original movements, which meant that on the very original batches of tourbillon ones, the main plate, which was the skeletonized dial, so to speak, had to be machined to a thicker depth than would have been needed in that movement so that they would fit properly into these cases. And that was why the movement was a little thicker than it needed to be and the cases are thicker. Then when we moved to Tourbillon 2 and we had to reorder or we had new cases, we were able to bring the thickness of the case down because we could revert to the thinner original bridges and plates that we had designed when we did it ourselves which meant that we managed to get the thickness down under 10 millimetres. Shame we couldn't get your thickness down. Well, I mean, my thickness is just ingrained. I'm not talking about your girth, I'm talking about your... Th Never mind. I'm talking about what's up here? Well, I was talking about what's up here. We're Scottish, we're all a bit dense. No two ways about it. So that, I guess, wraps up the wrist checks. Do we have time, the Ricky, to regale tales of kind of like what we've been up to? Well, we might have enough time, just enough time to tell you of two things that I've been up to. The first thing was we went to the circus, not being Dave, because Dave's life is a perpetual circus, but he's over in Switzerland. But me and my good lady went across to a place in Glasgow called Silverburn Shopping Centre. And in the car park, they had taken over 
one of the entire areas with the big top. And I thought, is this going to be like the one that we went to last year, which was quite good, but it was more family friendly. The one that we went to see was incredible. I was absolutely blown away by this thing. They didn't have any safety nets. They didn't have any guide wires. If people made an arse of it, they were pancake. They were dead. They were gone. That was it. Call the coroner. Uh, we walked in, brilliantly set up, not crazy expensive for what we got. We got front row seats and we got to see all these amazing artists. We're talking people that are at the top of their game and we saw everything from motorcycle stunts to crazy jumps to FMX. We had high wire jump, we had uh, trapeze artist people, all kinds of stuff and from start to finish, totally enthralled it was amazing and this is a group called circus extreme halfway through in the interval uh, they actually had a graphic pop-up saying that there was a amazon prime show all about them some series has been put together and i thought yeah sure okay but when we came back home and we actually had a look they do they've got a series i think it's maybe six episodes about an hour each and we rattled through a number of them because we were just blown away there's nothing quite like being underneath somebody performing crazy stunts and all the performers they had were brilliant so yeah fully recommend that they go across the uk don't think they go anywhere else apart from that and along with that the very next day i went back to my old stomping ground i went to the royal helen center at ingleston near edinburgh just in the outskirts of edinburgh because back in the day when I was involved with car magazines, we used to put on shows. We did things in Glasgow at the SEC. We did things up in Aberdeen and we did things at Ingolston. And this was a kind of continuation. It turns out it had been 20 years since the first car show event I was involved in. And although I am nothing to do with them any longer, I still know the people that run them. I went across to check things out and have a look. And the landscape has changed a lot. It wasn't filled with young folks like it was back in the day, messing around with cars, fitting six binnings and partial shelves and all that jazz. I think the scene has changed so much because of insurance, because everything is so tied down and you can't modify and dick around with things as much. But there was a whole load of classic cars, there was a whole load of things from my youth, prior to my youth, back in Dave's day even, and we had a look around and they had a stunt show. But the fact that we had seen so much so close the night before, it kind of soiled our expectations. And although it was fantastic, it just didn't quite live up to what we'd seen the night before. Uh, the show itself was great. The price was the same as it was 10 years ago, considering inflation and everything else. The car parking charge was insane, but that's nothing to do with the folks that actually put the car shows on. But I just had a great time. I, th I thought I'd be around it really quick, maybe half an hour, an hour at max. But no, it took about three or four hours to go around the entire thing, seeing all the stalls, all the traders, all the car clubs, all the show cars, and they had all kinds of stuff in there. This is one of those episodes where you want to look in the show notes to see what I'm talking about, and also in a few days' time at the weekend, you can catch up and you can actually see this on YouTube, because there was all kinds of stuff in there, and I had my phone out recording video clips left, right and centre. So a really good weekend, that's probably why I'm so shattered at the start of the week, because there was so much happening there, and we're going to be getting our skates on shortly, because we're going to be going across to Geneva Watch Days in a mere few weeks. Dave, you been up to anything, or be going to round the show out. I've been up to lots of things in fact, but nothing that I'm actually able to talk about. Although if you are a regular and you stay tuned, in the coming weeks I will be able to divulge what I have been up to. So other than that, I think we need to think about rounding this show up. I suppose so. And the first thing we'll tell you to do is to go through the back catalogue. We do a show a week, at least on YouTube, thanks to Gav. He's doing a really good job. He has fitted in perfectly. Better than I expected, and his humour levels are something to behold. So if you listen to us in audio and you want to catch up and see what we're talking about, I fully recommend you watch the YouTube video afterwards because people do listen and then watch and they get a completely different experience out of it. I suppose it's like reading the book and then watching the movie. Latest one was when we went down with Moser to the F1. We got a tour of the Alpine factory. That was phenomenal. We recounted it with lots of pictures, lots of video clips. Mizziel also dropped a clip from that on our Instagram where me, Dave and Caroline were doing a quick pit stop challenge of changing a Formula 1 wheel and we actually did quite good with some good comments on that, some good interaction, so another idea would be to follow us on Instagram, at Scottish Watches there. 
Along with that, as we mentioned, Barbara Plumbo was on with Dan from Watch Parts Motorcycles. He is a cool guy. He has got a great story to tell. And that was a bit of a weepy episode. When Barbara comes on, she does cherry pick the guests and sometimes they tell tales that can have you reaching for your Kleenex. Really? Reaching for your Kleenex? Well, that's a new type. But also you should listen to the Garrick episode, A Great Tale of British Watchmaking. If you're on your summer holidays, if you're going to any of the big cities around the world, tune into our Met Police episode where we had two of our regular police guests on telling us all about little tips and bits of advice about how to keep yourself safe. And following on from that, we have had a whole load of artists. We've had the Dell artists, we've had Ben Rousseau. If you like what you see in the YouTube video of the clock that's sitting over this shoulder, which I found out if you press the button, you can actually change the colours on it so it's matched to the chronograph needle on my watch today. You know, all about that colour coordination. That's Ben Rousseau. You can check his video because he has a lot of stuff you want to see visually or if you've only got time to listen, you can go through the back catalogue and listen to him. And that's pretty much it. Info at scotchwatches.co.uk for any suggestions, feedback, hints, tips, comments, positive and negative. We listen and we read them all. We don't read those Instagram DMs. And that is it. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And we'll catch you again soon.